Hello, good evening, and welcome to Become a Better Man. My name is Tunde Disu. Tonight, we are going to continue talking about boundaries, but specifically, we are going to be looking at emotional boundaries. Emotional boundaries. Sometimes you find that your problem, the issues in your life, the things that you are dealing with, Sometimes you find that they spill over to others. Now, sometimes, deliberately, so most of the times you don't even know that what you are dealing with, the challenges that you are facing, the issues that you are handling, the, 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 the problem that is facing you, and you think you are dealing with it just by yourself to find a solution, without you knowing, it is spilling over. To other people it is affecting how other people behave react relate correspond with you why you are not doing it deliberately one of the one of the characteristics of relationships is that somehow somehow what is affecting you what is happening to me the issues in my life they have an effect on you the challenges in your life they reflect also on me and vice versa so it, 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 it is it's the nature of life but mostly we don't even know that is happening and so it, that is one of the reasons why it is so important that each and every one of us, as part of the boundaries that we must set for ourselves, one of the most crucial ones that, that is required, that is needed, is emotional boundaries. Emotional boundaries. It's, it's unreasonable to expect other people to know where your boundaries are if you have not communicated it. And I think we've covered that over the past two or three weeks that we've been dealing with this uh, this issue of boundaries. So it is important for you not only to have boundaries, not only to have set your boundaries, but to communicate that to others that are around you, that will, will relate with you within the confinement of that boundary. And like we said two weeks ago, be prepared, be ready to defend it. To protect it, just like the boundaries are defending and protecting you. Because without that, without you communicating your boundaries to others, they don't have the, they're not psychic, they're not mind readers. There's no way they can know it if you have not told them. And if you have not communicated it, you cannot defend it, you cannot enforce it, you cannot hold them responsible for violating your boundaries. But more than that, if you set boundaries and you communicate it, but you shy away from defending it, what the message you are sending out to others is, oh, don't worry about that. You just walk over it. I, I, I don't mind. You can violate my boundaries. You can just pretend they're not there. I, there's nothing I'll do to you. Don't worry about it. And when you put that message, such when you put out such signals, don't be surprised then when people trample all over you. Don't complain then when people don't take you seriously. Don't, don't, don't go to bed crying and complaining when people violate your boundaries because naturally we teach people how to treat us. We teach people how to respect us. We teach people how to honor us. We teach people how to recognize, how to observe, how to respect and maintain the boundaries that we have set in our lives, especially where your emotions are concerned. See, healthy emotional boundaries, they will guide you within the relationships that you have for they will help you to recognize whether this relationship is a positive one or a negative one and what to do about it. Somebody said, 
everybody that comes into your life carries a blessing. Some by their coming, others by their leaving. But if you don't have a, a gauge, if you don't have a way of measuring whether this is a positive uh, uh, relationship or a negative relationship, you will not be you will not be able to determine whether the blessing is by their coming or the blessing is by letting them go. Your emotional boundaries, they will help you to identify whether this relationship is positive or is negative. And that's not you being mean. That's not you being nasty, being, being unfriendly. No, that it has nothing to do with any of that. You remember the first week I said one of the best things that you can do to yourself and for yourself is to be selfish, to think about yourself, to, to value yourself, to honor yourself, to respect yourself. Because unless you do that, the people around you, they have no model to work with. They have no parameters to guide them. They have no boundaries to keep them in or keep them out. Your emotional boundaries, they empower you to help you when you are dealing with others, to when you are caring for others, when you are providing for others, when you are defending others, when you are, when you are looking out for others. Your emotional boundaries, they help you, not by stopping you from caring and, and looking out for others, but they, they keep you, they keep your sanity, they keep your well-being. So that you don't go home with other people's baggage, with other people's issue. Now they are resting, but you can't sleep. Now they are happy, but you are still carrying the challenge that they have in their lives. But if you set emotional boundaries, it will help you to know. Well, we finish with that course now. I've sorted out that person now. I've helped this my friend or my neighbor or my spouse or my child or my whatever, whoever they are. But now I must have a space. I must have a place. I must have a, 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 a cave, as it were, that I can run into and be protected and still keep my sanity and still have good health. One of the things I respect the most with frontline workers, especially in this pandemic season. The nurses, the doctors, the hospital staff, and, 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 and all essential workers. One of the things I, I just really respect them for is having seen all of that pain and discomfort and agony and death and sickness and all of that, that people are going through right before their eyes every day for the past seven or eight months and they still go home and be normal they still go home and relate to their families they still go home and and just be 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 filled with their lives again one of the one of the 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 one of the tools that they use one of the tools that they are applying to be able to do that so that they don't bring the hospital experience, they don't bring the challenges in the office, they don't bring the issues they've been dealing with all day, they don't bring that home and take it out on the people at home. One of the things they do is they set emotional boundaries. They set emotional boundaries. So what are emotional boundaries? What is an emotional boundary? An emotional boundary is a line, it's a clear, distinct line, it's a demarcation, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's a sign of so far no further that you have drawn in your life, either physically or emotionally or psychologically, that that line says something. It says, this is what I am comfortable with. This is what I am prepared to take on board. This is what I'm prepared to deal with. And anything outside of that, 
I love you, but it's going to be from this side of the boundary. Emotional boundaries is a way of you saying to somebody who is trying either actively or expressively or by default without even knowing sometimes to put their issues on you. To make you the donkey that carries their load. Your emotional boundary helps you to say, no, that's not for me. No, that's not mine. And don't get me wrong. It doesn't make you a nasty person. It doesn't mean you are, you are mean and, and just wicked and you don't care for others. No, that's not what it means. It just means that you have a, a place for yourself. You have a space for yourself. You have a, a, a cocoon, a chamber, as it were, that you have protect that you have product, provided for yourself, so that when it is all said and done, you still know who you are. You still remember what your name is. You can still remember where you live and how you live and who lives with you. Emotional boundaries are clear, distinct lines that we draw to protect ourselves, to preserve ourselves, to defend ourselves without being feel, without feeling guilty that you're being mean or unless you deliberately set out to be mean, which is a different story entirely. But if it is in the context of these personal boundaries that we're talking, there is nothing wrong in you having boundaries for yourself. In fact, there is something wrong if you don't have personal boundaries. Because if you don't have personal boundaries, people will walk all over you, not because they are mean, but because there is no restriction. There is nothing that says to them, this is how far they can go. And so they will just keep on walking. Setting emotional boundaries, like I said, doesn't mean you are a mean person or you are nasty, you just don't care or you think about yourself only. No, it comes down to putting yourself first. And there is nothing wrong with that. It comes down to you respecting who you are as a person. It's, it comes down to you recognizing who you are, your identity, what are your values? What are the things that are important to you? Who are those people that are so close to your heart that you need to preserve and protect? What are the things you need to have and the things you need to avoid? What are the goals you've set for yourself? How do you manage your emotions? How do you run your life outside of the influence and interferences of others? And guess what? It's very okay. It is very okay for you to, to feel that way, to think that way, to act that way, to reason that way. Anything contrary to that, irrespective of where or from whom it is coming, all they're trying to do is to break down your boundaries and walk all over you. Emotional boundaries is important, it's healthy, it's necessary, it's required. It, it, it's demanded of you to have it. Now, certain emotional boundaries doesn't mean it is, it is either your way or the highway. It's not, a, it's not a, a, an issue of... A, all or nothing. If you can't see it my way, then there's no other way. No, that's not what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, you are going to interact with other people. You are going to relate to others. And just, just because you have the, the, the right and, the, and the, the, uh, 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 the, the, the power to set your own boundaries, you must also understand that others too do have the same right. Others too do have the same power. 
they to have the the, the the right to set their boundaries and you are expected it is required of you to honor to to recognize and respect their boundaries what i'm saying is in setting your personal emotional boundaries you also need to recognize that others have boundaries too and we all have there must be room for all of us to grow you can't say you've set your boundary boundaries today and everybody must know it today and and i fall in line with it no we all have there must be room for growth for understanding for learning for progressing in everything that you do so sometimes you will come across people with different opinions with different mindset from different backgrounds from different race and different understanding there is nothing wrong with any of that the important thing is you know your boundaries. You've set your boundaries. You know where they are. You've communicated your boundaries. You're prepared to defend them. It should, that should, should it be necessary. And that's all you can do. That's all that is required of you. And because you've set your own emotional boundaries doesn't mean you just automatically throw the baby out with the bath water bad water with other people's opinion no have you heard the saying chew the meat and spew the bone let them express their opinions they are entitled to it but it is now up to you to consider those opinions to check those ideas to align them against your values your boundaries and see which of them are in line and which of them are out of line and then you treat them accordingly. Your emotional boundaries should make it easier for you to just be yourself and not be intimidated. When other people are trying to express their own views and their opinions and, and share their own perspective, it should not make you feel threatened and feel like, oh, no, no, no. You know where your lines are. Let them say what they have to say. If it lines up with your, with your boundaries, great. If it doesn't line up, just shake hand and walk away. The same way that other people will think they know what is best for you. Oh, if I were you, I wouldn't do it that way. Oh, if, you, if I were you, this is how I will respond. Well, thank God you are not me. Thank God you are not in my position. You don't have my boundaries. You don't have my values. You don't have my, 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 my goals and, my, and, and what I need in life. You may think you know them. And with all of your sincerity, you could still be sincerely wrong. So when people come to you and say, oh, you should do this. You shouldn't do that. If I were you, thank you. But at the end of the day, you must know that the final decision rests with you. Because when all is said and done, they will go to their homes and go to their offices. It is you that will be left with that decision. And with that decision comes the consequences. Because like I've said before, the only choice that we have in life, the only freedom we have in life is the freedom to make, to make a decision. The freedom to choose. Once you've made that choice, the rest is set. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, others will have opinions. They will have ideas. They will have their views. And they're entitled to it. But it's for you and I to choose whether those ideas and opinions and views, whether they line up with our within the confinement of our boundaries or they are outside of our boundaries and treat them accordingly so don't expect oh, boundary setting or setting emotional boundaries or any of the other boundaries that we've talked about it's not going to be just you said it and bam it's happened and everybody just line up and it's not going to happen that way Especially when you're already in a, in, in a relationship with some people and suddenly it's like, where did that come from? That wasn't part of the deal from the beginning. 
or this is not what we said, or this is not how we said it. Now, I'm not talking about you going out and completely disrupt the, 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 the arrangement that you have. I'm saying you are growing. You are developing. You are getting more enlightened. You are being exposed to other things. And all those new information and ideas and opinions and, and interactions, they will rub off on your boundaries. And you will have to make changes. You have to adjust them as you go along. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. The important thing, what matters at the end of the day, is that how would the people around you, how are they responding to this new you? How are they relating to these new new boundaries and new 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 views of life that you have now? What are they saying about it? Are they respecting it? Are they observing it? Or are they just throwing it back at your face to say, no, that's not the you that I know. How they treat those new boundaries will help you determine, again, whether this is a positive or a negative relationship that you are in. And it doesn't, even if it's a negative relationship, it doesn't mean that's the end of the relationship. It just means you need to redefine, re-examine, re-discuss, re Re, re agree if, if, if possible on how to go further in that relationship. There's so many areas, so many different areas where emotional boundaries are essential. They are so important. They play an endless role in your life and in my life, so that when it's all said and done, you're not going to have to get the sad enough to find who you are and where you are. You don't need to, to, to consult a seer to find out who you are. Because if you already have your boundaries, you've communicated them, you've preserved them, you've defended them, your person, your identity, your, your values will always be distinct from that of other people. So what are some of the areas where you need to establish emotional boundaries? Quickly, we're looking at number one. You need to establish emotional boundaries where your time is concerned. You need to establish emotional boundaries where your time is concerned. See, people are happy to help you spend your time. In fact, they don't spend it. There are three things that you can do with time. You can either spend it, you can waste it, or you can invest it. But if you, if you let other people run your time, manage your time, determine your time, don't complain if all they do is to spend it and waste it. So you need to set emotional boundaries where your time is concerned. Don't overcommit yourself. Don't commit yourself to things that you don't really want to do just to save face with other people. Because if you do that, you will spend your valuable time doing those things, complaining and begrudging the people that you are doing it for, even though they didn't force you to do it in the first place. Don't overcommit yourself. And even when you are committed to something, along the way, if you think this is getting bigger than I thought, if you need help, there is no shame in asking for help. And don't feel guilty that, oh, I've said I'm going to do it. Now this is taking two months longer than I thought. Well, I, no, you, there's no face saving. Just say, I need help. I need support. I need resources. I need more time. Whatever help you need, ask for it. Number two. 
part of how to safeguard your, your emotional boundaries where your time is concerned is if you've taken on a task and you think it's become is growing out of your grasp, delegate. Ask others to take on some of the things that are on your desk. There's nothing wrong with that. It would be better for you to delegate to somebody or some people so that what is supposed to take two years is taking a year and a half. But at least none of you are growing gray hair in the process because you've now spread the load across many people rather than you just banging your head against the wall trying to, to meet the deadline. Another thing about your setting emotional boundaries concerning your time is say no to people. Learn to say, that's one of the biggest challenge in many of us, many of our lives, including me. No, there's something wrong in you saying no to people. Say no to people because you don't want to do something or you don't have the time to do it. Say no, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. That is against my, my, my values. That is against my boundary. That is contrary to my person. Another boundary that you should set concerning your time is, again, be selfish. I know it sounds so odd. Be selfish. Take personal time for yourself. It will help you to, 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 to recuperate and, and refocus and re-energize and, and bring balance to your life and to your being. And don't feel guilty and feel you owe some people some uh, uh, explanation or, or, or whatever about it. Unless, unless of course, you've committed yourself and now you're abdicating in, on your commitment just because, no, then you need to, to talk to people. But if it's just because you need your me time, please, take it. Make no apologies about it. Another area where you need to set emotional boundaries is where your person is concerned. The first one we talked about was your time. Your person. Don't agree. Don't accept any behavior that doesn't respect you. Don't let people just talk to you anyhow. Don't let people just, just wave you off as like you are a fly or whatever. No. It does not matter your status in life. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin or where you grew, you, you, you came from or whatever. You are a human being and every human being deserves, has earned from God who made them a level of respect. Don't submit to anything that questions or challenges or disrespect or degrade your humanity. Don't let people bully you and deceive you and lie to you and just take you for granted. Especially when you know and you found out that this, this rascal is just taking you for a ride. Confront them. The only way to deal with a bully is not to run from him or her. It's to confront them and say, okay, do what, whatever you want to do. Go ahead, do it. Because this, this foolishness stops today. Part of your emotional boundaries is to speak up. Speak up if you feel your needs are not being met. Speak up. That's an area that I'm, I'm, I need to grow in personally. To speak up when I, I just feel something is not right. Not that I, I'm, a, I'm a, a walkover person. I'm not just the, the confrontational type. And sometimes the only way to defend your boundaries is to be confrontational. Is to stand in the face of it and just say it and, and just leave it said. 
Don't accept responsibilities. Don't, uh, don't feel guilty and don't apologize for the action or actions of other people. It has nothing to do with you. Why are you the one apologizing for them? Why are you the one feeling guilty for them? We are responsible to one another. We are not responsible for one another. Value your own perspective. Value your experiences. Value your 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 background, your upbringing, value the core of who you are because the value that you place on them is the lesson that others will learn on how to respect you and how to value you. If you don't value yourself, guess what? You're teaching the world not to respect you. Another area where you need to set Emotional boundaries is where your relationships are concerned. Where your relationships are concerned. Don't accept continuous bad or disrespectful behaviors from people that you're in a relationship, that you're in relationships with. Because you are teaching them not to respect you. You are teaching them to dishonor you. Don't waste your time with people who are not going anywhere. There is not enough time to be wasted in life. And don't allow people to coerce you and manipulate you, either emotionally or psychologically, physically, or, or whichever. Don't, don't, don't let people just manipulate you into doing things that you don't want to do, into being in an area you don't want to be, to, to go where you don't want to go and say what you don't want to say. I remember when I was in uh, when I was in teachers college back in those days in Nigeria at Esige College in Abudu in, ben, in the old Bendel State. Three of my best friends are my teachers and my lecturers, and we hang out all the time. Most of the evenings we're in a pub or in a bar somewhere, and they are drinking alcohol, beer, this and that. they know I don't drink it. They don't even think about asking me if I want to. I just sit to my own corner and drink my malt or shandy and go home. And because they know that is part of my boundaries, they respect it. Don't let people manipulate you into doing what you don't want to do. Oh, just try it. No. Just once can kill you. Just try it once. And then you're dead. And then what? And don't allow other people's problems to dictate your life. There's a place for caring. There's a place for, for serving. There's a place for helping. There's a place for being there for others. But you know that most, some of the people that we love and we care for, with time, they, 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 start, they start to see as if we owe it to them to serve them. We owe it to them to care for them. We, it is now a, a debt that we owe. No, it's not. It's a choice. You know, one of the best things about creating or establishing emotional relation, uh, emotional boundaries is that it keeps people away from your life who will not respect them. They just stand out like a sore thumb. You know them. Even as I'm talking now, you can remember, you can start putting names against some of these things we're talking about. Some of them are not good for you. They are not, I don't, I, irrespective of what you think they are to you or what role they play in your life and whatever. Guess what? They are killing you. They are killing you. Thanks, Keith. 
Kid Kemster, my good friend, long time, how are you, sir? How's the family? How's Christian and the girls? No, don't let people dictate your life. Like I said, you must have personal, emotional boundaries. But just because you have it does not negate the fact that others have it as well. So it is, it is, it is expected, it is required of you and I that as we expect people to honor, to respect and, and observe and obey our boundaries, we too, we owe it to others to observe, to respect, to honor their boundaries as well. Because boundaries are so important in maintaining healthy relationships because they help you to communicate what you are comfortable with. What you are comfortable with. And so others, it helps them to also communicate to you where their lines are, what they are comfortable with. So it's good to understand that it's not just about you. They too have the rights. They have their rights. They have their values to protect and preserve. By you having that mindset, thinking about it that way, it helps you to understand what to look for, how to react, how to relate, how to respond, how to interact with others by observing and respecting their boundaries. And there are different ways by which you can do that to respect other people's boundaries. One of the things you can do is to Communicate what you understand their boundaries to be. And if there is any area that you're not sure of, if there's any gray area, any area of ambiguity, ask them, is this what you, is this how you, would you prefer it this way? I wrote in my, in my first book, uh, uh, Elisha Project, The Privilege of Serving Leaders. I wrote in that book that one of the things I do is when I have the opportunity to, to serve somebody as a, uh, who is a leader or in any capacity, one of the first questions I ask them is, how would you like to be served? How would you like me to serve you? Because there are some people that you think you are serving, but they just can't stand it. Because that is not how they would like to be served. But in your heart, in your mind, with all of your strength, you're doing everything to serve them. And they are just, it's just cringing them that, will this person just not know how to do things? So in order to avoid that, communicate clearly. Sir, ma, how would you like me to serve you? What are your preferences? What do you, how, what's your, where are your boundaries in this area concerning this aspect of your life? Because when I know them, I can observe and respect them. Rather than walking all over them and then having to either apologize or leave you in a state where you are angry, but because of the relationship you are too, you don't want to express your anger. So, what do you do then to respect other people's boundaries? Pay attention. Pay attention to how they respond to you in your conversations with them. Pay attention to their body language. Pay attention to their facial expressions. Pay attention to the, the attention and the, 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 the undivided concentration that they give to you when you are in, in interacting with them. Are they comfortable in your presence, in, in, in talking with you, or are they just looking for somebody to bail them out, out of the conversation you, you're having with them? Do they look like they just don't want to see your face at this time? Or do they 
as soon as you say something, they are giving you one reason or the other why they can't be there, why they shouldn't be there now because they have to be somewhere else. Whatever it is they're communicating, even if they are not, if they are not saying it verbally, when you pay attention, you will pick up the clues. And if there's any area where you are not sure, where you are not, it's not very clear, just ask. I would rather ask a foolish question than to commit an unpardonable sin somewhere down the line. I would rather ask you than to try and do something when it is completely opposite what you want to do. It's part of how you respect other people's boundaries. Another way of accepting other people's boundaries is that you accept what other people have communicated to you as their boundaries. You know, people have, when you're in a relationship, people, people just treat you as if they know what's good for you. Unless it, it has to do with, the, an, uh, with an issue of life or death, Even in, in social care, when somebody is, is obviously making a terrible, bad decision for themselves, you don't, you don't, you, you don't have the right to rubbish their decision, their opinion, their views, how they do, because at the end of the day, that is part of respecting them as a person and respecting their boundaries. Unless it has to do with life or death. It's a life or death issue. So, accept what other people have communicated to you as, the, as, as their own boundary. Accept it as, as valid and as concrete and as important to them as your boundaries are important to you. Now, in some instances, this the boundaries that they've communicated to you, when you look at it, they may not even make sense. It might just seem like this is crazy. This is just completely out of whack. It may sound so silly and you're thinking, come on, what's wrong with you? Can't you see the flaws in what you're saying? No. It is still their boundaries. The best thing you can do, what is expected of you, is to respect that. Respect that boundary. But if you feel you can't respect it or you feel you don't want to respect it, just walk. Walk. Just just say, okay, I will see you on the other side if we meet. Rather than trying to tell them what they're thinking, what they're saying, what they are seeing, how they are feeling, what they are explaining. Oh, that's wrong. That's just wrong. No. It may sound wrong to you, but it's their boundary. Respect it. Also, you must respect the autonomy of other people. You must respect the autonomy of other people. Sometimes, out of accident or by commission or commission, we overstep our boundaries. Especially trying to tell people that we know better than, we know what is good for them better than they know for themselves. You may have a genuine desire to protect them, to preserve them, to serve them, to help them. But is that your genuine desire making you overstep your boundaries? Overstep to, to disrespect their boundaries? Because I don't care how good and sincere you are. If you are not respecting other people's boundary, you are still a violator.
it's okay let me use this as an example in 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 some african families and culture and 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 all of that and i've said this before when a child is growing up all the parents want you to do to become in life is either you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're an accountant, or you're an engineer. Anything outside of those four, you are a waste of time. And they, they, they say it in a subtle way, and some just right in your face, and it has led to many, many, many breakdowns. In the relationships between parents and children. Because the parents wants to see you become a doctor. So that they can say, that's my child, he's a doctor. That's my daughter, he's, she's a lawyer. It's not about you. Have you thought about what this child wants to do? Where they want to go? How they want to be tomorrow? And if you are not respecting their views and their preferences and their desires and their their inclinations and their likings, you are overstepping your boundaries. There's a place to, to parent a child and there's another place where you are no longer parenting them. In fact, the Bible said, train a child in the way it should go so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. And what most parents have interpreted that to, be, to mean is, Train the child the way you want that child to grow. No. Go when you study that, it says learn the natural inclination, the preferences, the, the natural default of that child. Then help that child, mold that child, guide that child towards making the best of life out of that natural inclination. Don't wrap your children in cotton wool. Don't don't overprotect them. Because one day you're not gonna be there. They are going to walk out of that door and they're gonna face the reality of life. And then what? Part of protecting or observing and respecting other people's boundary is for you to continue to work on yourself within the, the, the environment of the relationships that you are involved with. Like we said at the beginning of, of this side of it, we said, find out what are their boundaries. Respect them. Walk within those boundaries. Part of that is for you to grow yourself improve yourself, learn how to manage your boundaries within their boundaries in such a way that there is, there, is some, there is some form of alignment where your boundaries are not completely thrown out and their boundaries are also respected. You shouldn't feel the need to coerce others or cross to, or cross into their boundaries and dictate to them what they do, they should do rather. No, that's manipulation. That's controlling spirit. When you respect other people's boundaries, you are demonstrating to them that you are trustworthy, that you respect them, that you value them, that you honor them, that you see them as an individual worthy of making their own life and their own decisions. And guess what? That will, it will cement your relationship stronger than you trying to tell them, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Let me help you. You don't understand what is going on. Let me explain it to you. Oh, I think I'm going to stop here for tonight. And we'll continue again next week. But whatever you do, set your own boundaries. And if you don't know how to go and listen to the first two uh, uh, episodes on this topic that we've done, 
where your personal boundaries are concerned, where your bound, your, the boundaries that you set within the confinement of all the relationships that you are involved with are concerned, and set your own boundaries, communicate your boundaries, and if need be and when it is required and necessary, defend your boundaries and make no apologies about that. Because when we all do that, we are getting closer to the destination of becoming better men and better women. Now, see you again next week. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you.